Okay, we have, um, I think most of the people we're expecting now, so I, I'm going to make a start. Um, thank you very much everyone for joining us this evening. Uh, just to start off um, with some introductions for some of the people you're seeing on screen. Uh, my name's Aya Collins. Um, I work for a consultancy, a transport consultancy called Smart Transport Hub, um, who've been commissioned by Camden and Islington to support with this engagement. My role in this meeting today is to chair this meeting. Um, and the purpose of this meeting is that we're really aiming to give everyone the opportunity to ask questions about this project um, and be able to express their views if they would like to, and also just to learn more um, from some of the officers we have here today. Um, we have two officers uh, joining us today on the panel. Uh, first, we have Matt from Islington, who is the head of transport projects, um, who will be giving part of the presentation and answering questions. And then we have Carl from Camden, um, who's the safe and healthy streets team manager um, who's also here today um, who will also be doing some of the presentation and answering questions thank you very much to both of them for their time this evening um, i wanted to start off that some of you may have noticed uh, by saying that some of you may have noticed we will be recording um, the presentation portion of this so we can make it available to people who couldn't attend this evening uh, but the q a at the end will not be recorded um, this is also a good opportunity for me to just go through the structure of this event today. So, as you can see, we're first doing a bit of a welcome and an introduction um, to the purpose of us all being here today. We then will be going through a presentation of the proposals, which will be short. There's quite a lot to go through, um, because, but we wanted to leave enough time so that all the people who have made time to attend this evening are able to ask a question or make a comment if they would like to at the end. So we expect the presentation to end at about 6.25, and then we will just move to a Q&A session where I will be taking um, verbal questions. You'll have the opportunity to unmute yourself and, and ask questions. Um, also, just to flag that if you would like to ask questions while the presentation um, is going on, there's a Q&A button, which you should see at the bottom of your screen. Um, those questions will not be answered during this meeting, uh, but answers will be collated and put through We'll put through to everyone who attended afterwards. Um, and then we're aiming to finish at 7 p.m. this evening um, on schedule. Just to yeah, flag once again, this is the there's a QA function. Um, that's what the little QA button looks like at the bottom of your screen. Um, these will be answered afterwards. And then also if it helps people, um, if it helps it makes it easier for you to follow the presentation and understand the questions. There's a request caption function at the bottom of your screen, which you can hopefully see a button that looks like that to enable captions. Um, if you're having any technical issues or need any type of support, um, you can email um, this address or, you know, feel free to kind of post a question answer and we, we will try and try our best to help you. Um, but yeah, really, really hoping to really have a good discussion this evening. And thank you to everyone who's made the time to join us um, to, for this presentation. I will now be handing over to Matt and Carl, who will be going through this presentation. I think we're starting with Matt. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for making the time this evening. And thank you to officers and councillors for attending. Cool. Thank, thank you, Aya. Um, yeah, and thanks again for everyone for taking the time tonight to, to come and hear about the, the healthy neighbourhood in, in Dartmouth Park. So I just want to quickly... Um, before Carl launches into talking about the proposals, and I will move through this quickly because I know I want to give everyone a chance to ask their questions, but I want to take a little bit of time just to set the scene for where we are in the process. So you remember, uh, if you were part of it, early, early engagement, we ran that uh, late last year in September to November, and now we're into our second of three, and it's really important that this is the second phase and what we call co-design. So tonight we will share with you a range of, of our ideas and our proposals, and really welcome your feedback through through this process. Um, we'll just touch on something that has been kind of uh, highlighted to us as far as that. See, this is a bit of an awkward time to, to do consultation, but uh, to do engagement. Sorry, but I appreciate it's a little bit later in the year that some people would have hoped. Um, but obviously, we had the little issue of not one but but two elections and appropriate pre-election periods to get through first. So, you know, it's really important that we are uh, you know moving forward with this project now. Um, it, is a, it is a six week engagement period. So hopefully um, yeah, there's enough time for everyone to participate. Um, let's go forward. Oh, yeah. 
Cool. So um, again, before we get into the ideas um, and the proposals that we've developed, I just want to share with you how you can continue to be involved. So obviously tonight we have the, the online event. Um, we also have uh, two in-person events, uh, one in, in Camden and one also in Islington, you know, really trying to make it as easy as possible for as many people um, to attend. We also have an online survey, which we'd, I'd really appreciate if everyone filled in. Um, that's on the uh, the web page linked in this uh, for this project. Um, we also have paper surveys for those who are not, you know, who would prefer to prefer to fill in a paper survey than do an online survey. You can pick them up from both the Archway Library and also the uh, Greenwood Centre. So. Obviously, yeah, we, I just want to take a touch a little bit of, again on, on where we've come from before we get to where we're going. So obviously we've had, uh, this is as little to before is the second phase. So back in the first phase, I'm not going to go through the detail we shared then, but just direct you if this is the first time you're, um, you're engaging with us is again, you know, the, the early engagement that we did late last year, similar to this session, we, we recorded the session. So if you jump on our website or on YouTube, as you can see linked in front of you, there is um, a recording and yeah, you know, what that really does, it's, it sets the policy context for why we're doing this. It sets uh, what uh, a healthy neighborhood is, you know, defines the project area, talks about even earlier engagement. You know, this is not the first time that we've started to talk about a proposal here. It's, you know, this is a long time coming and a lot of work has been gone into this um, and also starts to show you some examples of, of schemes and ideas that, that we'd like to explore to really help uh, develop a healthy neighborhood in this area. So yeah, just to touch base again on, on what early engagement was. So we had a, a range of things to, a range of opportunities for, for residents and businesses to participate. Um, but the primary focus was really early engagement is on the, um, the online map. So we had an online map similar to you can see on the screen in front of you, where we asked, we asked residents, businesses and stakeholders and all interested people to, to go online and, and tell us their ideas. That could be anything and everything, you know, dropping a pin on a location on a map, telling us where there is a traffic issue, telling us where there is a parking issue, telling us where there is a greening opportunity or where there needs to be, you know, better, safer walking or cycling infrastructure. Um, and yeah, it was, it was really popular actually. So got the next slide. You know, just a little bit of a, a highlight of, of what we heard and, and how much we heard. So we got um, 40, 40 emails in our, uh, our project inbox. We had almost 800 comments on, on that map that I just showed you then. We held the, we had another two in-person public events with you know almost uh, just over 350 uh, comments on, on paper maps, which was really quite a fun experience. We visited uh, 275 individual businesses to, to understand their needs, to understand how projects may impact them. Um, and we also you know, took a lot of questions as you'd expect. And it was, it was an online engagement similar to this, it took another 26 questions on, on that night as well. So you know, early engagements was, was, was quite intensive, but again, we're, we're doing three phases of this and, and tonight is, is again, part two. So just really high level about what we heard and, and what start to inform the projects as we move forward. So you won't be surprised, but you know, there was a lot of concerns about local traffic volumes. There was a lot of concerns about speeding vehicles and, and unsafe traffic uh, behavior and, and a real concern about the, the local air quality in, in the neighborhood. You told us there's some really good opportunities in this, in this neighborhood as well. You'd like to see us uh, install measures to restrict traffic movements and calm traffic where, where more appropriate. And you'd like to see a range of measures to support walking, wheeling and cycling within the area. Um, and additionally, not on the screen here, but also a, a lot of uh, people highlighted more opportunities for, for greening and places for, for social interaction. So I'm gonna pause there and I appreciate I've rushed through this part, but I wanna give Carl more than enough time um, to talk about the proposals and get to the Q and A. So I'm going to pass over to Carl from Camden to talk about the proposals we want to share with you tonight. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Matt. Uh, again, I would like to thank you all for your time, and I hope to see you at the in-person events next week. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the project area, a little bit about the phase two engagement, and then focus on the proposals, and we can have a Q and A. So I'm not going to go into too much detail on the project area. As Matt said, in the phase one, there is a video where we talk about the project area. And the existing uh, and the issues that uh, were highlighted to us before we started this phase one engagement. 
and what we wanted to get out of the phase one engagement. But the project area is neatly defined by Highgate Hill West on the east, by the archway gyratory and Highgate Hill in the east, and Junction Road and Fortis Road in the south. And I just want to say, but when working with a project like this um, and moving forward, we have to consider the engagement that was undertaken, the respective borough's transport strategies, and what we can do within the existing street network and the local geography. We have to consider things like the existing traffic controls, like ban turns, HGV restrictions, speed limits, bus routes. And the scope of the project also has to consider things like the natural features, like the rail line and the heat and the existing parks. So moving on to the project uh, comms, a leaflet was posted out to people and that is in the middle uh, there. There's details on how you can join the events. I'm sure you'll join the events from that leaflet. And those trifolds are on the right-hand side, which are also up around the project area. On the left-hand side, there's the project website. As Matt pointed to, uh, there's a, an engagement summary on there and the phase one map is still up there. If any of you are new to the project, you can go look at that. And I want to talk about in the next two slides, just two of the slides that are on that, uh, or two of the pages that are on that project website. So on the next slide, you will see the project background. Again, Matt has alluded to before 2013, there was a significant, or before 2023, there was significant projects and engagement done mostly by Camden in this area due to resident feedback. So it's essentially building on that work, this phase two engagement or this engagement with Islington. So if you're new to the project, please go and look at that project background slide. And that has essentially led us to the next slide, um, which talks about where we're currently at, which is the proposals and survey. So if you click that tile or that web page on the survey, it offers you the opportunity to do the survey, which is what that person at the top is indicating. So to do the online survey, as Matt said, you can request a paper copy. But importantly, there's a link to a proposals overview document, and that gives a lot of detail on the background and the proposals that are being made in this stage two engagement. So on the next slide, there's a few, the first few pages of that document talk about the project background area, uh, sorry, the background to the project area. The map here shows the public transport links. It highlights the bus routes, the existing bus routes, and the tube stations. So that's just giving some people some information on how to orientate uh, themselves with the bus routes. On the next slide, we'll be very open with the data that we have. So the traffic data that we have is made publicly available. There's two different sets of data there. That's from 2023 and 2024. So again, if you want to look at that proposals overview document, you can see the traffic counts and some of the uh, historic traffic count from 2023 is also there. So moving on to the co-design stage, as Matt has outlined some of the feedback that we got during the phase one, we have pulled together the following project aims in line with that feedback and the borough's restrict, respective transport uh, strategies. So we want to make the area greener, healthier, and more pleasant to spend time in with new plants, trees, and seeding. We want to create safer streets for children to travel independently so they can walk, scoot, and cycle to school. We want to reduce traffic volumes in the area to make local streets quieter, less polluted, and safer for walking, cycling around. And we want to support local businesses to thrive. We also want to improve health and well-being through cleaner air. So with those project aims, we've come to three proposal types. Now, the three proposal types do work independently of each other. We have a local traffic management plan, which is a holistic set of measures, which takes account of the local context and the existing traffic controls that are in the area. Separately, we have road safety, bus priority, and cycle network improvements. So there are features to improve road safety, to improve bus journey times, and to improve cycle safety. And then thirdly, we have a series of improvements to local streets, and they are primarily public realm schemes, greening schemes, pavement widening, and those kinds of things. We can talk about those uh, in the next few slides. So the local traffic management plan has been developed in response to the feedback and the respective borough transport strategies. And it looks to treat, treat the area as a whole. That's a difficult word to say for an Irishman. It looks to treat the area as a whole, um, and it seeks to reduce the ability for motor traffic to cut through the healthy neighborhood area. And it proposes to changes to reduce northbound, southbound, and eastbound through traffic through the healthy neighborhood area. Now, as some people have been pointing out in emails to us over the last week, westbound motor vehicle traffic movements are still facilitated on some three st tr streets through the area. 
The map on the right hand side, I appreciate it's quite small and there's additional maps which kind of add clarity, but this is in the proposals overview document that you have. The black dots on that map are existing controls on traffic. So there's, about, there's 12 of those in the area at present. And the red, green dots and the arrows that are on that map, I appreciate it's small on the screen, but it is in that proposals overview document I mentioned, outline the changes that we are proposing. On that proposals overview document, every one of those changes, there's some text to explain each and every one of those changes. But this map is also in that proposals overview document, essentially outlines the design ethos behind the scheme. Essentially, there are areas created by this scheme where there will be access changes into those areas. So each of those colored areas would have a different access route by motor vehicle than they currently do. And we appreciate this is quite complex to understand. So we've color coded those maps. And additionally, on that proposals overview document, there are on the next slides, each of those individual areas, we've highlighted the access routes to get to each of those individual areas. If we can go to the next slide, please. We've highlighted each of those individual areas has a map which shows how residents of that seller deliveries to that area would be able to, uh, to perform. So the overarching principle is every property is available. Access to every property is available by motor vehicle. So those maps are really helpful in, in, in showing how each area would be accessible by motor vehicle. And the final slide on these proposals is that each of the areas also has an egress map. So that's showing where, if you were leaving in a vehicle from your area, how you would get to areas around uh, or destinations around the, the area. So that is a background on the road, uh, the, the traffic management plan. The road safety bus and cycle network improvements, as I mentioned, we want to reduce motor vehicle speeds across the area, improve road safety, improve cycling, including adding, adding some segregated cycle lanes on main roads, and improve bus journey time reliability. So there are seven measures there, which are indicated on the map. They're again listed on that proposals overview document. Each of the seven locations is highlighted and what type of intervention is planned at those locations. So if you have any questions on any of the individual ones of those, we're really seeking your feedback tonight on the in-person events and on the survey. The third type of intervention is improvement to local streets. So there's 13 locations that have been identified during the phase one for road safe or for improvements to local streets. These proposals include improvements to pavements and crossings, new public spaces, high street improvements, new trees and greening, including rain gardens. Some examples of these are on the following slide where there's examples of rain gardens, pavement buildouts, and uh, public realm areas. So each of those 13 on that proposals overview document uh, have, a link, uh, have a text on what is being considered at that location. We really value your feedback at each of those locations. So the next steps, we will go on to questions and answers, but the next slide just outlines where we're at in the program. So as Matt, outlined back in 2018 to 2021, there was a lot of work in this area um, and, and that is all outlined on the project background page. And in the phase one engagement we undertook last year and that has led us to this phase two where that arrow is. Following the feedback from this stage of co-design, we would move to a public consultation and the date to that is yet to be decided. But a consultation would be undertaken and then following that consultation, a decision would be taken on whether and how to proceed with any proposals in the area. Following that decision, there then would be implementation, um, which would be again, subject to confirmation around uh, the delivery dates. So thank you very much for your time. Um, we're here to answer questions and I really do hope to meet you next Tuesday or Wednesday at one of those in-person events. Um, thank you very much to Matt and Carl for that presentation. Um, so we will now be moving into the questions and answers portion of this. And yeah, we have at least 35 minutes to do this. So hopefully everyone who would like to will have the opportunity to either make a comment or ask a question.